This is Sonia Schreier-Norris, Program Manager for Plowed at the Library of Michigan. Thank you for joining me today for a tour of Michigan Plowed websites. I want to make sure that you're aware that there is a full list of all 100 plus Michigan Plowed libraries at the program homepage mishlibrary.org. Just click on Michigan Sites and you can view every site that we're talking about here today um, at your leisure. So I want to talk about a number of features that make for a strong site. We're going to talk about overall graphic design, the use of carousels, portlets, responsive design, unique features, cover pages, great footers, pages that Google well, and strong navigation. Let's get started with graphic design. The first page I'm going to show you is the Buchanan District Library site. They use the Metropolis theme with a very simple color scheme. They have their own very nice logo that they use up here in the upper left. They pick up the turquoise out of their color palette. And then they have plenty of space, both visually as well as physically, on their site to bring in other colors. The Buchanan District Library has a lovely website. Next, let's move on to the Cadillac Wexford Public Library. They use the slate theme with an orange accent. And one thing they do really nicely is have some homemade graphics here that bring in that orange, makes it look really good. They also size the items in their portlets to one another so that it's a nice visual display going down the side of their page. Nice job to Cadillac Wexford. Next, let's move on to Camden Township. They use what is probably the boldest of all the color schemes. This is also the Metropolis theme. But they're able to carry it off because they have a very bold logo. So they have a very refreshing looking site. And last, let's look at a Hemingway themed site. This is the Co-op Mid-Michigan Library League site. They have a nice dramatic banner image that they uh, use with the blue overlay. They have a nice home page, and they do a really great job with their navigation and with their content. Next, let's move on to carousels. I'm going to show you two examples of carousels. The first is from the Bad Axe District Library, and they have a uh, carousel that takes up two-thirds of the page here. And one of the things that they've done is use the right side of the carousel for their text overlay. So one thing to be aware of with accessibility is that you want to be sure to include text overlay so that screen reader users can understand what you're um, trying to convey because they don't get this uh, wording here. So they've done a nice job of including that information. The Spindler Library does a tour of uh, different areas of their building, and they have great text overlays that are inviting and warm and um, share more information about what their library does. Good job, Spindler. We're going to move on next to portlets, and I actually only have one example here to show you of portlets because there are so many libraries that do it well with some of these other examples that I'm showing you. But I wanted to show you the White Cloud Community Library. Do you see how they have consistently sized all of their, almost all, of their portlets to be about 300 pixels wide down the right and left of their pages? It makes for a very, very consistent look. Also, the right portlet, the left portlet, and the center content ends almost at the same point on the page. So they've done a nice job with their portlets. Next, let's move on to responsive design. So responsive design means sites that look good on a phone or tablet. And what happens with the plowed sites is that first they display the content in the middle of the page, then the left portlets, then the right portlets. So let's shrink up this page and see what we get. First, we get the upcoming events. And then, hey, look, you don't have to scroll down very far to get location and hours. That's because they put the location and hours portlet on the left side of their site instead of the right. Then you get their calendar of events, some promotional materials, and then you get to the right side of their portlets and you get their library catalog information. 
let's go on over to the Port Austin Township Library. So in the center of their homepage, we have first their promotion of Mango, then we have their um, carousel, and then right away for them, we get their catalog, which is nice. You don't have to scroll to get their catalog. Then their online resources, of which they are quite blessed. And then, once again, before you have to scroll very far, you get their location and hours, which is what people are looking for. Finally, their calendar and upcoming events, and then a link to the library catalog. So nice job, Port Austin. Next, we're going to move on to some unique features. I wanted to show you some things that different libraries around the state were doing. Many of these have to do with events and the event calendar. And I will be the first to admit that I am not quite sure how some of these libraries embedded some of these um, different types of calendars. So I would encourage you, if you would like to use their services, to contact the library. So the first I want to show you is the Beaver Island District Library. And over here, they have an embedded uh, event listing calendar in their portlet. Looks nice. Has a little bit of a description for each event. Next, let's move on to the Caro Community Calendar. I can tell you that this is from Local Hop. That's a Michigan company. And the really nice thing about this calendar is that it's not just the library. It's also the events that are happening around the community. This is a paid service. Um, but it's a very nice calendar. There are a number of libraries in the Plowed community that are using local hop. On to the Freeport District Library. The nice thing that they do is that they've embedded their catalog search in the middle of their homepage. This takes out that extra step of having to link over to the catalog. That functionality is still there for their patrons who want to just have the catalog, but they've also embedded the search. If you've got questions about embedding the search, I would encourage you to contact your um, vendor. Next, we have the Fremont Area District Library. And down here, they have news from the web, from the left, from the center, and from the right. And if that's a service that you'd like to offer to your patrons, I thought that was kind of a nifty feature. They also have a very nice looking site. Good job, Fremont Area. Next, on to Fruitport District Library. This comes out of their catalog. They have new arrivals with book jackets. If you can get that from your catalog, that's an awfully nice little feature to offer. Gives that nice visual um, interpretation of what your library has. On to the Wald Lake City Library. They have embedded their Twitter feed. So this is absolutely doable. Just like you can embed your Facebook feed, which is something that we used to do back in the um, Plinket days as part of training, they have also embedded their Twitter feed. So just to let you know, that is something that you can do. And finally, um, our last example of unique features, the Thompson Home Public Library. They have embedded a Google Calendar. So instead of the Plowed Calendar, they're using a Google Calendar. And there are a number of Plowed libraries that use this as well. Next, let's move on to Cover Pages. So these are the drag and drop page layouts that you can create in Plowed. And I will be creating a how-to video about these. But I wanted to show you a couple of examples. So I'm logged in here to the Fruitport Area District Library. And this is their summer reading program cover page. And as you can see, they're pulling out events from their calendar over here on the right. Then they have a carousel in the upper left and two separate tiles of information underneath that. So if we go to layout, we can see that they have a plowed carousel tile, several rich text tiles for content, and then a collection tile over here on the right. And collection is what it's called when you're pulling events out of your calendar. And uh, once again, I will have a video on that as well. I'd like to show you another example from Fruitport. They're really going great guns on the um, cover pages. This is for their services page. As you can see, they've got several images. And again, they're nicely sized to match each other. And then a number of items over on the right. And then finally, they've got content down at the bottom of the page that spans both of these columns. Let's see how they did that under Layout. So if we go under Layout, 
we can see they have a number of rich text tiles on the left and right, and underneath that, they simply chose one that had an actual column size of 12, whereas these have a column size of 6. And that allows you to build out your page. Let's take a look at a different site, the Dearborn Heights Libraries. Their entire home page is a cover page. They have no portlets, and it's actually a very nice layout. If you look in the back, you can see that she's done quite a bit of complicated work. She has spacer tiles so that she can put her content over on the right. She has spacer tiles between rows, and then she has some long rows and some shorter columns. All of this is available to you as a cover page. Let's take a look at some nice footers. This is the Fenville District Library, and this is a nice, clean, clear, crisp three-column footer. They have the required IMLS uh, information, then they have their location and contact information, and finally, some information that's important to their library, information about endowment funds and memorial gifts. Let's go back to Cadillac Wexford. They've done a very sharp job with their footer. They have a couple of columns of uh, links to their most important pages. Once again, they repeat card catalog and their account information with their homemade graphics that match the orange in their theme. They also have their social media icons and the ability to connect with them. And they did not forget their contact information. Let's take a look at Alva Belding. These are actually images, contact us, and quick links. Those aren't um, fonts that are available in Plowed, uh, but they look very nice as headers. It makes it look uh, nice and spiffy. Let's go over to Lapeer District Library. They have gone completely visual. They just got a brand new logo. So in the lower left, they have Lapeer District Library, where your story begins. IMLS in the center, and then the fact that they are a Michigan eLibrary super supporter over on the right. And these are all approximately the same size and visual weight, and um, they pick up the purple in the two different logos, and it looks very nice. So good job, Lapeer. Next, let's take a look at a site that Googles really well. We're also going to look at it in Yahoo and Bing. So I'm not sure the last time um, you thought to Google your own site. You probably don't do it very often, but your patrons definitely do. So there's something that I teach in class, um, but it may have been a while since you've heard about it, and that's the importance of the summary field. So here's the Presque Isle District Library. If we go over to Google and look at what Presque Isle District Library results appear as, we see that we get this really nice statement. We believe that the Presque Isle District Library System is your community connection. Connecting with our community helps us build a strong relationship, and then we see the dot, dot, dot. We know what goes on. And then they have these subheaders. You might wonder, where is this information coming from that they have such a nice display in Google? That is coming from their summary. If you go into the summary of your category, you will see that you have the ability to put in some text and search engines pick that up exactly. It says used in item listings and search results, and that is exactly what happens. Uh, Plowed plays very nicely with the search engines. Let's take a look at Yahoo. Yup, it's picking up that line. These other items here are more in tune with the most popular pages on the site that the search engine is seeing. So what, what pages are getting the most traffic according to that search engine. And then over here in Bing, yep, it picked it up too. So very nice job, Presque Isle District Library. I would definitely encourage you to Google your site. And if this line here is missing, it's because you don't have a summary statement on your home page. You can fix it by adding one. And I would encourage you to include summary statements for all of your primary pages, because those are the ones that are most likely to get picked up in search engine results. OK. And I want to give you just a couple of examples for strong navigation. 
The Saugatuck Douglas District Library has done a fantastic job with organizing the content on their site. If you go under About Us, they have a very strong listing of information about their library, services, policies, contact, board of trustees, strategic plan. Under eLibrary, they have all of their digital offerings. They have resources, which are a little, little vague, but still very strong navigation. Programs and events. Friends of the library. And finally, this category under new building, they're clearly working toward a new building, and they have some very clear wording to get you to the pages that a community member would want to know about a new building. Millage at a glance, ballot language, FAQs, architectural drawings, and public forums. Really good job, Saugatuck Douglas. And I will bookend this presentation by showing you once again the Buchanan District Library. They also have a very strong navigation system. One of my favorites on their site is this How Do I link. So you can say, how do I get a library card, renew, reserve, or request, or defer an item, get a book through interlibrary loan. And as you follow these different links, you get short, concise pages with very clear information. They also have information about their building campaign that includes things like donors and highlights. That concludes this video on a tour of Michigan plowed sites. This project was made possible in part by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Have a great day.